What's up you guys, Dr. Lift for Change, physical therapist here. This video is all about how the coronavirus COVID-19 and how it affects physical therapy. <coughs> uh, don't cough on me. Hey everyone. Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Lift for Change, physical therapist. Or you can call me Justin Lee. Here you'll find videos on fitness, physical therapy, and lifestyle that helps inspire self-change. You guys, I moved to Hawaii and this freaking virus went viral. <laughs> And it's definitely affecting my practice and I'm sure all practices as healthcare professionals around the entire world. So those of you who are listening in right now that have friends or relatives as healthcare professionals, please pray for us because we are on the front lines doing our best to battle this virus, but at the same time try to extend the best quality care to make sure that all patients are taken care of. So I wanted to jump on here in the midst of all of this because y'all are probably quarantined and watching this video and you guys have all the time in the world so might as well get some education about it on how COVID-19 affects physical therapy. So this video is going to be talking in three different points. You guys know I love bullet points, right? Stay organized. Number one, how COVID-19 is affecting physical therapy practice as a whole. Number two, what precautions we are taking because as physical therapists we are getting really close and of course I mean social distancing is a big thing now and number three my own personal opinion on how I am assessing this whole situation and of course how it is affecting me at my clinic okay so how does this affect physical therapy so as you can imagine physical therapists all work really close right like we're touching and pushing and massaging and soft tissue mobilization. Everything is literally like within close quarters with the patient. So social distancing is kind of like a double-edged sword for us because yeah, we want to practice that, but it is within our practice as physical therapists to be literally not social distancing. So what are we going to do about that? So you can imagine all the interactions that we have every single day with all those patients that we have and who knows what they're coming in with and what they're touching and every single equipment that they're touching in the clinic, stuff that we also have to touch. We have to get the stability ball, touch it, give it to them. They're touching it, doing their exercise and we have to put it back. Ankle weights. Therabands, goniometers, measurement tools, weights, all of those things, there's all those chances of contact and risk every single time. So if you think about it, we are putting ourselves at risk every single day. And it's not like we are wearing full on gowns, right? With the gas mask and everything saying like, okay, here we go glove up, gotta sterilize. No, we're not doing anything like that. As physical therapists, or at least in my practice, we are showing up like this, and we don't have the tools, we don't have the resources to be gloving up and to be putting on suits to do that. And of course, yeah, that is a risk that we are taking, but of course, we're gonna take the necessary precautions for that. And I'm gonna be going over that in my second point. But, you know, if you are having fever-like symptoms, if you're coughing <coughs> or sneezing, or if you're feeling like it's hard to breathe, please, if you are a patient or if you are somebody going to see a physical therapist or a healthcare professional, please just stay home. And if you really, really, really need medical attention, please go to your emergency room or your urgent care and seek medical attention there. And unfortunately, yes, as physical therapists, we do help you get out of discomfort and pain. But at this time, we can only do so much and everyone is taking a toll on this and everyone is getting affected. 
but we all need to do our part to limit the amount of exposure and increase the amount of time that we have so that the hospitals are not as affected and that we have ample time to think of and create a vaccine to really help everyone that is affected with this coronavirus. So we do have to take the necessary precautions. So that takes me to point number two. What precautions are we taking as physical therapists? Basically, if you're sneezing in any of the vicinity, get the hell out. <laughs> and leave that roll of toilet paper here. That's for the clinic. <laughs> of course, it's not gonna be as drastic and in your face like that, but you know, we're all thinking it, of course. If anyone is sneezing or coughing, it's like, uh, let's practice social distancing. <laughs> so of course, the nature of physical therapy, we are in close quarters. But you know what? We are doing our best to take as many precautions as possible. That means as physical therapists, you know, after the patient comes in, we're wiping down tables. That should be a normal thing. But of course, right, we are at higher risk. So we are wiping down tables after every single patient at the hour. Anytime anyone has an opening, we're wiping down equipment, the tables, the front, the doorknobs, anywhere that people can touch. If they are sitting, we're wiping down and spraying the armrest. We're even wiping down pens that people are using. So anytime that there is a possibility that someone can transfer the virus, right? We are doing our best to disinfect everything. We're also taking the necessary precautions and taking the temperature of patients as well. So if anyone over the temperature of 99 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah, we're gonna ask you to come back at a different time. And it's not to say that you don't deserve the care and we definitely want to help you, but by you coming in and being at higher risk, and who knows if you're positive or negative, you know, it's just not fair for you to be there and, and have the possibility to expose not only the staff, but other patients as well. And who knows of those staff and the other patients that they're going home to that if they have friends or relatives or even kids or newborns that are at higher risk for possible fatality with this virus. So of course, sanitizing is going to be a huge thing, right? So wiping down everything, even using alcohol wipes to wipe down our keyboards and wiping down laminated papers. So basically trying to disinfect any possible way that things can be transferred over. Also, as physical therapists or just in general as healthcare professionals, we want to greet you with the nice firm handshake and say, hey, my name is Justin. Welcome to physical therapy. We're going to work hard today. But since it's not really advised to have any kind of contact, you got to go and throw them the double shaka. So it's going to be looking like this. Hey, what's up, man? My name is Justin, and I'm going to be your physical therapist today. Let me give you a hug. Let me give you an air high five. And we're going to work very hard today at physical therapy. And as awkward as it is, it is something that we do have to practice as healthcare professionals to also, you know, make sure that you are acknowledging the patient, but also acknowledging that we do have to respect social distancing, right? But honestly, like, yeah, we practice that, like when we greet people, but we still put our hands on the patient anyway, so, so I don't know. It's, I don't know. Okay, so lastly, how is this affecting me as an employee, as a physical therapist, working at my job? And also, what are my thoughts about this whole thing? So of course, we cannot deny that this coronavirus is highly contagious. And you guys know all the numbers and the stats of how much, right, people are affected and how many cases we have. Even in Hawaii, in the beginning of March, it kind of started off with two cases. Then it went to three, then it went to five, seven, and now we're up to 10, 14 cases here spread out across the different islands, but it's spreading. And it's obvious that tourists are coming into Hawaii too, right? And so who knows? And it's super hard because this virus doesn't really show symptoms until several days later. So we're putting ourselves at risk every single day, discussing with patients and talking with patients and meeting up with them. And honestly, these patients who are coming in are in 
real pain like they feel real discomfort even to the point where some of them feel like am i gonna get better is this something that's gonna affect me for the rest of my life? And they already have that mentality coming in. And now with this whole coronavirus, now they're thinking, am I gonna even live? Am I gonna receive the care that I need from a physical therapist? And if I'm not, is this truly gonna be a permanent thing that I'm going to deal with forever? And these are actual thoughts that patients think about. And so, we as physical therapists need to do our duty to help and serve the population but also be very smart about okay there are signs and symptoms that are pretty consistent with coronavirus or the stuff that's going on let's do what we can but we also need to take the necessary precautions and make a decision on helping you either at home maybe via telehealth or giving you some exercises and some treatments today that you can try to do and try to practice for at least the next week or two or until the next time, right? But it's also very hard because every day this thing is evolving and evolving and every day we get a new regulation, a new recommendation, a new thing to say, hey, don't do this or hey, we should restrict this. So every day is different and as I'm making this video today, this is basically all that is up to date as of today. So with this whole virus going on, you can imagine that people get scared and they really want to be attentive of their health, right? So you can imagine in the clinic, people are falling off like crazy. And so as a clinic, we are taking a hit. So we actually had a meeting the other day and we said, hey, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to make some decisions here. You know, people are gonna have to flex off or take time off or maybe work into their holiday pay or their sick hours or things like that because the clinic is taking a toll with all these no-shows or cancels and they're not getting paid. So the business is not making money. However, and I respect my business and my company so much because they are really, really biting down to the nail and really trying to get every single employee as many hours as they can. However, they also are telling us, hey, we also need to be flexible with the situation and the company cannot just keep paying you for open hours to, for you to just clean or whatnot. And I've talked to some of my other friends and some of them even just said, hey, you're gonna take the whole week or two weeks off and you're not gonna get paid for it. So I am super, super, super gracious for my company that they are even attempting to keep me on as much as possible. But already my hours have been cut from 40 hours to less and it is unfortunate and yeah, we do have bills to pay, but you know what, I'm still grateful that at least I still get the opportunity to work and make some money. But you know what, those of you who are staying home or those of you who are self-quarantining at home, you know, this can also be an opportunity for you guys to connect with your loved ones at home. If you live with your family, if you live with your mom, dad, or siblings, or maybe some friends or roommates, this can be a really good opportunity for you guys to build stronger relationships and deeper roots with each other and maybe investigate different parts of life that you never really had the time to really invest in right we always say we have no time well your 40 hours are back to you so you have time so maybe you can invest in some relationships that need to be mended right or you can invest in some other relationships where you're like hey they're a really good friend and i really haven't had a chance to invest deeper let me text them or let me call them or let me facetime them to really start building a stronger bond so this can be an opportunity for us to do that and build community and build fellowship so that is my input as a physical therapist in an outpatient clinic working in Hawaii as of now. Of course, everyone across the world is affected here and we are all trying to do our part to serve you guys as healthcare professionals, to serve other patients and really help them as much as possible. 
but this is this is an ongoing thing and it's just going up and down up and down on both sides of the spectrum as healthcare professionals but also as patients so i think in this time we all need to have patience as this thing continues to go i am guaranteed i am confident that this thing is not something that's just going to blow over so we really all have to do a part and yes trying to practice social distancing and also doing your part of being proactive of signs and symptoms and taking care of yourself and limiting the amount of exposure with via social uh, with via social distancing washing hands disinfecting all those things that are recommended by the cdc guidelines so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you are interested in more information i'm going to be posting a link that the apta the american physical therapy association is recommending and also the um cdc guidelines as to what the coronavirus is and some updates on that as well so thank you guys so much for watching this video on your couch while you are self quarantined we really appreciate you doing your part as a citizen to help human society as a whole stay lifting have a great one guys